कंपलसरी ऑर्गेनाइज दिस वेबिनार सीरीज फॉर फ्यूचर वेबिनार सीरीज में आज जो हमारा टॉपिक है दैट इज ऑन द कल्टीवेशन ऑफ ऑर्किड्स सो टुडे वी हैव विद अस मिस्टर उदय पाटिल फ्रॉम राइज एंड शाइन सो आई वेलकम हिम ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ इंडियन नर्सरी मैन एसोसिएशन आई हार्डली वेलकम ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स हु हैव जॉइन अस इन दिस वेबिनार सो वेलकम टू ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स दिस इज एन 67th वेबिनार एंड ऑल द क्रेडिट गोस टू आवर डायनेमिक president mr vip singh sir and the team of indian nursery men association i also thankful to the team who is helping us in the back end uh, prachi madam and uh, pinky madam so i welcome them also so today we have an a uh, very interesting webinar that is on uh, cultivation of orchids before uh, going to that uh, i would like to introduce the activities of indian nursery men association which is conducted under the dynamic leadership of mr vip singh sir so i will request uh, prachi madam to give a brief presentation of activities of indian nursery men association so over to you prachi madam thanks thank you sir i hope i'm clearly audible to everybody yeah you are audible please go ahead. all right a very good evening to all the ladies and gentlemen present in the audience today i am prachi kohli yeah. and i would like to share with you a uh, very short introduction about what iim is and what iim does the indian nursery men began its green journey in 1987 and for the last 33 years we have been working as a close knit community our vision is to unite the horticulture community and work towards the goal of making a positive economic cultural and social change our founder and first president late shri arjun das agarwal ji was the one who sowed the seeds of iime as we see it today at iime we are forever indebted to his visionary man for his untiring efforts this is a leadership board who have taken arjun das ji's agenda to new heights our current and present president mr yp singh ji who is also the ninth iime president took charge in 2009 and in under a short span of his dynamic leadership we proudly announced that iime is now growing not only nationally but also globally the current leadership board is evident of the fact that iime leaders hail from all parts of the country representing the forever future of unity and diversity of india furthermore we have our iconic green ambassadors from various industries are always supporting iime in its endeavors IIM is today the largest NGO as a member of the National Horticulture Board with an extended network of more than 2 lakh farmers and cultivators. Therefore, IIM represents plant breeders, greenhouse distributors, greenhouse gases distributors, retailers, educators, florists, researchers, landscapers, and all other stakeholders across the spectrum in the horticulture industry. IIM works in various thematic areas, ranging from PR and advocacy to publications and partnerships, from exhibitions. Uh, events networking fundraising and even capacity building and study tours iime worked extensively during the covid-19 pandemic with the government ministries through video conferencing and put forward the problems faced by the nursery sector during the lockdown iime was successful in categorizing plants and plants products under the essential items category and providing immediate relief to nursery men all across india our a great news for all our subscribers and members at iime is that it is now growing globally i am proud to announce that iime family has now expanded to various foreign industries such as vietnam vietnam uh, japan netherlands south africa netherlands italy colombia among others our star feature is our nursery today magazine which covers all news and updates related to nurseries and allied sectors and features expert talks by industry experts and influencers You can now download a soft copy of our monthly magazine from the IIM website. Apart from this monthly edition, IIM also publishes directory for horticulture industry every three years, and its third edition is due this year. In IIM posts, India's largest international exhibition on ornamental plants, nurseries, landscape, floriculture, greenhouse gases, arboriculture, and allied industries called the Horti Pro India. IIME in association with the Delhi Tourism and Transportation Development Corporation Limited organized the 33rd Garden Tourism Festival held in March 2021 at the Garden of Five Senses New Delhi the theme for this year was green balcony 
INA was an associate partner and award sponsor at this event. Last but not the least, INA also started an initiative called Project Sampradan, encouraging its wide network of members to contribute towards the PMK funds in view of the global pandemic. We have brought we have broken records in this department where we have collected more than 51 lakh rupees and donated towards the PMK fund. With these amazing success stories, I thank you all for your patience. You can always contact us in the given phone numbers and email for any query and discussion or visit INA website for more details. I hope you have a wonderful time today with our esteemed speaker. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you very much, Prachi, madam. Thank you very much, Prachi, madam. Today we have is a very dynamic personality is with us, Mr. Uday Balchandra Patil. He is going to deliver his talk on today's topic, cultivation of orchids. He has a wide experience of our more than 21 years in this field of floriculture. He is working in Rise and Shine since 2004 as a greenhouse general manager. He was looking after the production department. Before joining Rise and Shine, he was in Mauritius and worked in the floriculture. In Rise and Shine, he is looking after the all the managerial international marketing strategies. Mostly they are working in 24 countries and he is looking after all the activities of Rise and Shine in international markets. So today we have with us a very practical knowledge oriented person. He has a wide experience of more than 21 years. And we are very fortunate that today we are with us, Mr. Uday Patil, who is going to guide us on cultivation of orchids. So I welcome him on behalf of Indian Nurserymen Association. And I request him to deliver his today's talk on the cultivation of orchids. Over to you, Mr. Uday Patil, sir. Thank you, Sachin, sir. Uh, today I'm going to give a small presentation on orchid cultivation. Just do the full screen. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, fine. Please go ahead. Okay. So today our topic is dendrobium orchid and emerging crop for the Indian floriculture as well as uh, in nursery organization. So in orchids, there are a lot of species like dendrobium, uh, Philonopsis, Venda, Mokara. But today we are covering the dendrobium orchids, which is mostly demanded in the Indian market as well as uh, in uh, international market also. This is the high selling flower in Indian cut flowers industry. Most popular is dendrobium uh, varieties, which is normally mostly used in uh, floriculture uh, as well as in uh, mostly events. Approximately there is a 100 crore of turnover all over in India. And these are the mainly import cities like Mumbai, Delhi, Madras, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Pune. In dendrobium orchids, there is uh, some popular colors. Mostly uh, it's white, violet, yellow, and pink. Potential is very good in Indian market, good demand in uh, Indian market. In dendrobium uh, varieties, there are uh, only, mainly seven, eight varieties introduced in Indian market. In that, uh, most demanded variety is red Sonia, big white Fayan, big white uh, Sanan, Ayra Pink, Singapore White, lovely pink, Burana Jade. These are the pictures of big white Fai, uh, white big Sanan, Ayra Pink, 
white fire sonia red lovely pink and burana jade orchids mainly like highly humid climate temperature in between 18 degree celsius to 30 degree celsius most properly it's like ventilation day and night temperature it require required minimum 10 degree celsius to 20 degree celsius variation is affordable during day hours it requires uh, minimum 15000 lux light intensity and maximum it requires 40000 lux light intensity orchid basically loves the highly humid climate during night it not goes less than 30% and during day time it should be maintained till to 80% so we uh, in summer time most mostly to increase the humidity level uh, farmers are using sprinklers minimum 2 to 3 times as per the requirement of the plant during hot climate the plant requires more water to not to dry up the plant during the plant activity growth plant needs more water orchid never like the sudden changes in climatical condition if there is a sudden changes in or orchid mainly uh, grows uh, in three types of uh, polyhouses and shade houses mainly in thailand or uh, in other countries they are using flat shade net because there is always a uh, good humidity level but in uh, indian climate they are always need tunnel type net house or uh, we can uh, cultivate in polyhouse in flat type mainly 2 mm thickness uh, gi column we can use it otherwise we can use the 5 inches thickness 6 to 10 feet height cement poles structure height should be 3.5 meters hockey is required with the wire ropes inner farming of wire rope plastic coated uh, 5 mm or we can use as a 1.6 mm thickness gi pipes framing should be done in two pa parallel stage upper side black shade net mostly properly farmer are using that uh, 75% uh, shade net mostly use and inner side uh, farmer are using 50% black shade net with movable handle curtain like these are the some photographs how uh, they are using to develop the structures in flat shade house in polytunnel or in uh, green uh, natural ventilator polyhouse mainly uh, farmers are using gi material column with 4.5 meter thickness uh, for 4.5 meter height and thickness with uh, 1.8 mm or 2 mm thickness distance between two columns pipes uh, are 8 meter half round type of design side hockey premium thickness upper side 75% black shade net and uh, at the bottom level uh, farmers are using only 50% shade net with 4 meter width in regular greenhouses g1 greenhouses design gutter height minimum we required 4 meters upper top cord and down cord cover with polyfilm from gutter height of bottom 50% percent, 
black shaded fitted with movable handle on inner side black 75% sh shade netting uh, you uh, normally uh, farmers are using after uh, structure we are come to the, the uh, benches normally orchids are uh, planting on the benches benches with should be uh, maximum 1 meter bench length maximum 30 meter bench height should be 1 meter from the ground pathway between the two beds are 1 meter central walkway maximum 2 meter minimum 1 meter type of benches in benches we can use as cement uh, poles as well as gi pipe also we can use uh, for developing the benches. In cement poles, we recommended with 50% black shade net and beyond the black shade net, we cover with the cocoa shell media. Orchid, basically, the orchid's root system is aerial root system. So to support the plants, we are using cocoa shell media. Otherwise, mostly root system can absorb the uh, water or nutrients from the air moisture. Cement poles with GI net, plastic net, and cocoa shell media. Vertical strong pole thickness should be minimum uh, four inches with the length uh, six meters. Vertical intermediate poles thickness required two inches and length four meters. Horizontal Intermediate supports thickness required two inches with the length of four meters. Wire rope uh, to support the shade net, uh, we will put uh, plastic coated wire ropes with the five mm th thickness and fish rating three mm sides. This is the system which is uh, for the benches. You can see in the pictures, the black net uh, mostly use it. And this is the pictures for intermediate pole and uh, starting strong poles. After two years, we need fish spreading to support the plants. Can, uh, so plants can stand on the benches uh, properly and straight. So to support the plants, we are uh, using fish string. This is the normal system on upper side. Uh, photo you can see, you can use as uh, cocoa blocks also to do the plantation. And we can uh, do the plantation on shade net with the cocoa shells. These are the photographs. Uh, farmers are using the cocoa blocks. It is very easy system to support the plant and grow in a proper way. And this is the another system. Farmers can spread the cocoa shells on the benches, on the nets. And in that, uh, we can do the plantation. Coconut shells should be uh, very soft. Before plantation, we need to disinfect uh, media with formaldehyde with the 40%. Before planting, media should be washed with clean water to wash out the lignin and sodium levels from the cocoa shell. On the benches, plant density is normally 10 plants per meter square. Plant specification, 
seedling sites you can see in the fruit of photographs minimum two shoots required in the seedlings plant to plant distance is 15 cm and row to row distance is 15 cm most of the farmers are using four row planting system after plantation plants required uh, more humidity so we need to do the irrigation system and in irrigation system we can use as a fogging system as well as sprinkler system in one line bed one way fogger distance between two foggers required more meter or one line two beds mounted on the 3.5 by 2 meters four way foggers with the capacity of 27 liter per hour and in sprinkler system we can put one line with the uh, discharge of 40 liter per hour mounted on 1 meter from the plant height or in very hot areas we can use as a 3 300 liter per hour discharge to 500 liter power up per hour discharge mounted on 3 to 4 meter distance height sprinkler use for wetting the media and increase the humidity level in first pictures you can see the uh, 300 liter per hour discharge uh, sprinklers and on the beds we can put as a single way misting system with the capacity of 30 to 40 liter per hour discharge and in hot climate mostly farmers are using 500 300 to 500 liter per hour discharge uh, sprinkler system to maintain the humidity level as well as to increase the moisture level around the to increase make the mic, microclimate around the plants dendrobium orchid normally growing very slowly after two months you can see the photographs it it can grow up to 30 cm till to 15 cm and within 6 to 7 months it will grow up to 60 to 90 cm or dendrobium orchids it will take normally 7 to 9 months to give the first flower in sonia red you can see the first flowering normally takes 9 months this is the singapore white and it started after 12 months it start giving the regular flowers burana jade in dendrobium market burana jade is a very good variety but it grows very slowly it takes normally 12 months to give the first flower but after first flowering uh, when it starts the flowering it gives very good Uh, spikes with the 15 to 20 buds normally in dendrobium orchids first year we will get two to three flowers and second year we are getting three to five flowers and from third year we are giving nine to 10 fl- 12 flowers per year and from third year it will give till to six year 
9 to 12 flowers this is the right stage to harvest the flower when uh, first two to three uh, buds get open and another five six buds are close that time this is the right time to harvest the flower after harvesting we need to keep the flowers in a uh, solution to maintain the waste life in the packing system most we are suggesting use the cotton balls on the bottom to maintain the moisture level and sustain the flower to reach the market in a good quality these are the system normally farmer are using per box they are putting around 60 to 70 bunches and they are delivering to the market we are recommending fertilizer should be spray in the morning time because at the morning time there is a uh, temperature not be more than 20 degree celsius so leaf can uh, absorb the uh, fertilizer water it should be fertilizer we are giving through the spray every after 7 to 10 days during heavy rainfall we need to avoid the new fertilizer while giving the fertilizer never uh, mix up with any insecticide or fungicide it will give the it will not give the good result that's why we are about to add fertilizer insecticide and fungicide insecticide or fungicide can be mixed up together and should be applied by spraying once every 7 to 10 days between evening time 4 pm to 5 pm on a fine day normally orchids are very hardy crop crops but there are some insects which can damage the plant in that scales millibugs aphids thrips white fly spider mite chewing plants pests snails and slugs caterpillars and grasshoppers mainly affect the plant quality as well as flower quality scale are mainly the sucking insect that attach feed underside on the leaves in leaf axils on the rhizome they often hidden under the old leaves and several infections cause chloritic areas to appear on the leaves so to control the scales mainly there are uh, some isopropyl alcohol or we can use at palatheon to control the uh, scales to control the scales remove the old leaves flowers eliminate scale hiding spaces 
and allow easy in, in, infection. There is the another pest, mostly observed in the orchids, is millibugs. Millibugs are mostly the sucking insect to attack any part of the plant, but tend to stay stuck away, junction of, on, of the leaves and stems. Several inspection cause floretic areas to appear on the leaves, which may darken, causing the leaf to yellow and drop permanently. If we found the millibugs on the plants, so we can use uh, malathion or safer soap solutions. If we found the millibugs, we can use regular sprays two weeks or one week time. We need to remove old leaves and flowers to eliminate the hiding space and allow easy inspection to check plant carefully. There is another space like aphids. This is the most sucking insect attack mostly on the birds or on the flowers and it will decrease the flower quality. So to control the aphids, wash aphids away from the plants with the jet of water or we can spray the pesticides like malathion. While using pesticides in orchids, always use sticker to control the pest. There is a fourth pest, which is mostly uh, found in the orchids, that is thrips. It's basically the sucking pest. It infects the it infects the birds, which is not open, and flower may be deformed, exhibiting water soaked spots. Leaves may appear pitted, silver and beach. To control the aphids, uh, thrips, plants are. Plants and flowers can be sprayed with the pesticide like malathion or safer soap applied in the accordance. Remain hidden up on the plant can be reintroduced to the plant from the other flowers, the landscape. Good sanitization will help prevent the infection as will keep keeping plant host. Flowers, citrus, gardenias, eucalyptus, separate from the orchid. White flies are small mouth like insect that attack birds, flowers, and need growth. The tail scenes of white flies in cloud of tiny white insects arising from an affected plant when it is moved or disturbed. To control the white fly, use malathion or safer soap. Nowadays, there is a lot of chemical available to control the white flies like spintor, confidor, Good sanitation and elimination of weeds will help prevent the infection as well keeping the plant host separate from your orchid plants. In dendrobium orchids, spider mite is very harmful pest, sucking pest. Mites typically feed on the 
underside of the leaves and can be found under the leaves so it is very difficult to control the mites so and it is very uh, easy very hard to identify under the leaves so to control the mites plants can be spray with miticide like calithena following label instructions being particularly careful to control all the undersides of the leaves mite appears during warm and dry weather increasing the humidity leaf wellness in snail in orchids snails and slugs are mostly found because in orchids there is always wet condition and it is good for the snails and slugs so to control the snails it is very difficult but there are some chemicals available metal dehyde is the with the 2% it's very good to control the snails and slugs in general there are snail species of different to control white with the chemicals and the best method to control the prevention sanitization and exclusion exclusion the support of greenhouse benches should be treated to prevent the spray of snails by attach in copper bands copper bands or applying the pollucicides metal di metal dehyde iron phosphate and methyl methyl carb products contain metal dehyde may be more effective in watering is with held up for a while after treatment there is another pest it's called cat caterpillar it mainly damage leaves as well as, as well as to the flowers also so reduce the flower quality this is the chart mainly most of the treatment pesticides available in the market from the different companies in orchids common diseases are bacterial and fungal rots leaf spot foliar blight flower spots and blights in bacterial disease there is a soft and brown rot it's called irvinia bacterial brown spots pseudomonas black rot with the pythium and phytophthora fungal like fusarium and rhizoctonia these are the symptoms in the bacterial brown rot irvinia species small water soak spots appear on the leaves and often are surrounded by yellow holes yellow if unchecked the infection will rapidly rot the leaves and rot roots the spread more slowly into rhizomes and this wet rot may be have full order and it completely rotten the plants in 2 to 3 days the bacteria are optimizing organi organism that can enter through the wounds dendrobium leaves appear yellow and water soaks and become black the symptoms of when in vendor 
which becomes black and sunken. In pseudomonas bacteria, there is the symptoms appears where on the leaf as well as a small soft water soaken brisk initially. Dirty green in color, infection spots enlarge and eventually become brown or black, dried up and sunken. In pictures, you can see the Sodomonas bacteria. In Sodomonas bacteria, we can remove the infected tissue and spray the plant with bactericide like bison or copper oxychloride, copper compound following label instruction, disinfect growing area with the 10% bleach solution. The infection usually starts in the black rot, pythium and phytophthora species. The infection usually starts on the leaves, new leaves or rot or roots. So all plants parts are, the disease spread rapidly and will kill the plants unless treated promptly. Underside as well as irregular water brown spots, which rapidly become purplish brown or purplish black. In black rot, there is another uh, Pythium and Phytophthora species. New leads show purple or purple brown area with yellowish ad advancing margin and may be pulled off easily. To control the Pythium and Phytophthora, unless the plant is valuable and best approach is to discard, this is a highly continuous and will spread from plant to plant from splashing water. If the plant is valuable, Isolate it from your own plants, remove infected tissues with the sterile tools and drench with the suitable fungicide like copper base. In orchids, there is a fissure which block the flow of moisture through the plants, vascular system, plugging the phloem, infect the leaves are yellowing like thin, shrivel, wrinkled and wilted and eventually die. The diagnostic system seen the plant is a circular or band of purple, pinkish purple discoloration on the outer layer of the Rhizome. In fungal rot, rhizoctonia, root rot occur when the medium break down, drainage in a poor or plant are poor watered. So, so rhizoctonia is a very contagious and if the disease is not controlled immediately, infected plant develop brown rot, root rot and dry. Rhizoctonia is a primary or root disease. To control the rhizoctonia, fungal rot, Remove the infected plants and leaves using sterile cutting tools. Drain the remaining plant in the fungicide like thyponate 
methyl such as clearly triple, triple three six systemic fungicide following label instructions disinfect the growing area with the 10% bleach solution in fungal disease anthracnose leaf spot holistic holistic leaf spot leaf septoria anthracnose normally disease infected area portal portion of the plant the leaves are most often attack leaf tips start turns browning beginning at the apex and proceeding towards the base want to control the anthracnose there is a systemic fungicide like hyphenate methyl or mancozep alternate systemic and pro proteasent fungicide used to control the anthracnose Phyllostic septo septoria, the tart mostly uh, found this diseases in dendrobium orchids. The tiny spots are starts on either leaf surface as sunken yellow lesion. They continue to enlarge, they becoming dark brown to black in circular or in, in regular lesion. to control the leaf spot normally farmers are using mancozep all alternate systemic fungicides in a rainy season botrytis is normally found on the flowers very small black or light brown spots on the flowers the spots may be enlarged and cover the entire flower if condition are moist and gray fungal growth may appear on the several infected and deciding the flowers to control the botrytis remove the infected flowers and spray with the uh, fungicide like diconil this is a fungicide and bacterial side treatment to control the diseases and bacteria in orchids there are some floretic or, or necrotic spots streak lines and rings in the leaves in orchids there are 6 to 7 type of viruses normally found orchid flake virus tospo virus tobacco spotted wilt virus cymbidium mosaic virus tobacco mosaic virus and there are other type of damages often the found in the orchids like cone cold injury sun burning fertilizer burning and salt toxicity in other type of damages if we give the excess water excess water is absorbed the absorbed by the roots 
weaker than it is lost by the roots causing swelling of the plant cell and producing a blister like laser occur when plants water during warm day and the light turn for cool or during periodic cool weather when water called quantity frequently is not reduced the blister like symptoms can appear on upper or lower leaves surface stems petals or sepals other type of damage when temperature goes below 18 degree or 15 degree the surface is in pitting large sunken areas and discoloration water soaking is tissues usually followed by wilting and browning internal discoloration accelerate rate of natural death increase the susceptibility to attack by fungicide by fungi and bacteria slowly growth or limited growth flushing of the orchid normal growth rate symptoms of freezing discoloration or burning of the foliage water soak areas that process and necrotic spots on the leaves and death of sanction of of the plant or the entire plants there are other type of damages also sudden lap or uh, black spots on leaves when leaves become overheated from too much light and sudden increase in light during the change in season or moving plants outdoor in the spring burn fades on thin tannish leaf stare over time at the time of fertigation if we give the fertigation in a high light intensity or high temperature the water soluble fertilizer on your flower while you are watering you have the potential of burning the flowers particularly if we use the full strength rather than dilute fertilizer the fertilizer salts will be burn the flowers leaving water soaked spots after you are done fertility fertility fertigation come back with a plain water spray on the flowers to wash the fertilizer of the flowers to prevent their spoiling it is safer to use a more diluted fertilizer say 1/4 to 1/8 of the label strength unless you determine your plant need higher fertilizer concentration there is a, another damage if we give the high uh, ec or high salt so it it will affect it will also affect the plants salt prevent if you water supply and added up by fertilizer accumulate over time salt build up looks like wasting of the brownish crush on the around the pot and surface of the mounting substrates of mountain orchids can be sign of over fertilizing if allowed to remain those salts will negatively impact on the health of your plants excess fertilizer salts burn and it kill the orchids its symptoms look like lack of root growth may be indicate unhealthy concentration of minerals salts in the medium on up to full fertilizer burn if this is suspected descend the plant and check its roots dead root tips brown roots or salt crush on the potting medium surface sir
Sporting medium surface are sign of trouble in later stage. Round lip tips. So it is preferably use the dilute fertilizer, say one four to one eight of the label strength. Thank you. On behalf of Rise and Shine, to give me uh, this opportunity. Thank you, Sachin sir. Thank you, Ayne. Thank you very much, Uday sir, for a very informative talk. You have rightly focused on all the aspects of the cultivation of orchids, especially you have rightly focused on the uh, pest and its management, disease and disease management. So now this platform is open for the question and answer session. Those who have any question, they can raise their hands. Uh, there is one question from Mr. Deva Pratham. Uh, he is asking about the um, NPK ratio for shielding and for inducing the blooming in orchids. So can you focus, Mr. Patil, sir, on these uh, questions? Yes. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. In the initial stage, when we uh, do the plantation of uh, uh, dendrobium orchids. Initially, three to four months, we maintain the NPK ratio, one raised to three raised to one, till to three to four months. And after four months, uh, fifth months to six months, we can change the fertigation ratio, uh, one raised to three raised to two. In that uh, ratio, uh, nitrogen should be 1.45% initially, and we can increase till to the 1.90%. Uh, Phosphorus should be initially 0.15%, and we can increase till to the 0.22%. Potassium should be 1.75% at the initial stage, and we can increase after nine months till to 2.40 percent. Calcium is also playing a very good role. Initially, we can keep 0.65 percent and we can increase till to 1 percent. Magnesium also uh, initially 0.40 percent to 0.80 percent and sulfur initially 0.15%, so we can increase till to 0.50%. These are the micronutrients, and in mic micronutrients, we can use magnets 30 to 100 ppm, ferrous 6%, we can use 50 to 150 ppm, copper 8, to 15 ppm and zinc 50 to 150 ppm. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for the answer. I think uh, Dr. Deva Pritim is uh, satisfied with your answer. And there is one question from Mr. Yogeshwar Bidbai. He is asking about uh, where he will get the mother plants or net pots uh, for orchids. So I think you are the right person to yes. answer this question. Yes. Uh, in India, there are uh, Rise and Shine is the first uh, dendrobium orchid uh, introducing. That time we started uh, in our lab uh, with the tissue culture, and Rise and Shine is providing the uh, dead pot plants as well as pot plants also. So, this is the right platform get the customers good quality 100 percent uh, good quality plants they can get in rise and shine thank you very much sir i think this forum is open for the question and answer session those who are willing to ask their questions they are free to ask their questions so i request all the participants who have any direct question to our uh, speaker uh, they can ask their questions so any participants who are willing to ask this question? Yes, Ganeji, please ask your question. Sir, I want to ask you 
हेलो हेलो आई एम ऑडिबल या योर ऑडिबल सर प्लीज आस्क यू यस यस प्रोफिलैक्टिक मेजर्स व्हिच कैन प्रिवेंट सो मेनी डिजीजेस एंड इंसेक्ट्स एज वी हैव द सीन इन द लेक्चर यस ऑर्किड इज इंफेक्टेड बाय सो मेनी इंसेक्ट एंड पेस्ट यस is there any prophylactic procedure for it yes there is a uh, if you you uh, maintain the monthly schedule rise and shine is uh, not supplying the plants only we are giving the technical backup also to the all farmers my technical person regularly visit to farm also to give the uh, proper technical backup with the monthly schedule so if you follow this uh, schedules <clears throat> you can prevent the insects as well as diseases and pest also uh well sir thank you very much so there is one question uh, from uh, on salicylic acid aspirin and salicylic acid so how salicylic acid plays role in uh, orchid so can you focus on this question uh, aspirin uh she is asking uh, swagarita is the person who is asking the question is aspirin is good or how salicylic plays its role uh, in orchid aspirin aspirin and salicylic role of salicylic Sagar, then, man, can you directly ask your question? So our speaker will be, it will be easy for him. Uh, yeah, good evening, sir. Yeah, yeah. Please ask your question directly to the speaker. Yeah. So, uh, if aspirin can be applied, how is it applied? Again, what is the role of salicylic acid? for the uh, orchid can it be applied udesh sir uh, you are not audible uh mr udesh sir aapne apna mute kiya hai and mute kar dijiye udesh sir please unmute yourself हेलो हाँ हाँ जी सर हेलो हाँ यू आर ऑडिबल सर प्लीज आस प्लीज आंसर द क्वेश्चन सचिन सर योर वॉइस इज नॉट सर जो अभी सागरिता मैडम ने क्वेश्चन किया रिगार्डिंग सैलिसलिक एसिड उसके बारे में रोल ऑफ सैलिसलिक एसिड किस तरह से होता है इन ऑर्किड तो उन उसके ऊपर थोड़ा सा आप फोकस करेंगे तो इट विल बी इजी फॉर हर सर यू आर ऑडिबल आप ऑडिबल है हाँ जी आपका आवाज आ रहा है सचिन सर आई एम नॉट गेटिंग योर वॉइस सर अभी आ रहा है सर तब तक जो भी पार्टिसिपेंट्स है क्वेश्चन इन द चैट सो आवर स्पीकर विल बी इजी फॉर हिम टू आंसर यूर क्वेश्चन सर एक क्वेश्चन आया है उदय सर Uday sir, there is one yes, question. Yes sir. It is is it possible to culture the wild orchids and make it commercial one? Jo wild orchid say, can you make it the commercial? I am not getting your voice, sir. Prachi uh, uh, madam, I am audible. Yes, sir, you are audible. Patil sir, आप अपने system का volume थोड़ा तेज increase करिए. शायद आपको आवाज आ जाए. हेलो पाटिल सर 
ha he, he will he will come back i think so there is a, some technical issue uh, but is sir jo bhi uh, just just to make i am not getting your voice okay sir okay okay sir 